Hello, Brother Maru here. Welcome back to Ultimate Apple Dreadnoughts. And today, uh, uh, another user scenario by uh, Mitch. Thank you very much. Um, and this is based, uh, I believe, loosely on the Battle of Texel. Um, so we had to design the USS Tennessee. And uh, I haven't changed the scenario this time. Uh, I've, I've included all the, light, the lighter ships. So we'll see. And this one's being recorded live on Twitch uh, because uh, I, I'm doing it live on Twitch. Come, come join me over on Twitch. Uh, show Ultimate Admiral some love over on Twitch. Um, so you might hear me interacting with uh, with people in the chat as I go. A catapult. Oh, you mean like um, uh, spotter planes and stuff? Yeah, some towers clearly have, are clearly based on designs that had spotter planes. Yeah, that would be um, that would be very cool. Um, but I imagine that's probably just going to be an upgrade for um, uh, the campaign. One new thing, though, that I discovered this morning, because this is the very first time we've been using version 83 here, uh, these barbettes are now filled in. doesn't do anything functional, but you don't only have big gaps um, if you choose not to use them. Right. Um, okay. Okay. I think I see where I'm going to go with this. So, all right. Funnels. Let's go for a double funnel. Uh, guns. Uh, 15 mark 1, 14 mark 3. Oh, this is another one where it's going to force me to use 14 inch guns because these 12 inch guns are Italian 12 inch guns and therefore hideous. So, yeah, we're going to go with 14s. Uh, next question is type. I'm probably going to go with triples and just have three. I know I could fit way more. I'm going to go with three. Not valid, empty barbet. Interesting. I thought they got rid of that bug. Oh, well, it's all right. We'll fill in all the barbets. Now, we are facing destroyers and all sorts. I tend to prefer the six inch gun in the casemates or casements. Mm. Millie, shush. Mmm. We need some 8 inch guns to provide just a little bit more anti cruiser firepower. And then, are there tiny ones? Yeah, there are. And some 3 inch guns for good measure. Hmm. Yes. Uh, if this helps, yeah. Oh, awesome! Yeah, no, I I, I love um, designs like that. The Shield Cruiser, the Atlanta class, things like that. Okay, so I think this will work. A, B, X. Plenty of 6-inch guns. Uh, a couple of 8-inch eight, eight guns. And some 3s, just in case. Right. Let's get our engines set up. We can use geared turbines. And oil, and that gives us full speed at 26 knots, which I think is fine for this era. That's perfectly acceptable. Uh, range, I'm just going to drop off. Uh, crit 3. Let's go for an auxiliary diesel and a shaft 2. No, 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 chat away. I, I enjoy it. I, I love um, doing stuff on Twitch. Um, I don't do Ultimate Admiral too much on Twitch. Or I'm trying to do more, just because it's an underrepresented game. Um, but uh, no, no, chat, chat away. That's why I, I like doing it on Twitch. Um, do you think that carriers are going to be unavailable for the game? Yes. Uh, I don't think they're going to introduce carriers at all. 
Um, I think Ultimate Admiral is going to exist in a kind of universe where aircraft either ne were never invented or certainly the aircraft carrier wasn't. Um, simply because I think it's a game about battleships and dreadnoughts and big naval artillery and going boom. Um, <laughs> and that's what I love about it and I think the devs know that and I don't think they'll bring carriers in. However, they might include aircraft and carriers and if they do, I reckon they'll be campaign only and there'll be a kind of asset that you use to kind of spot enemy battle groups or possibly do small amounts of damage through airstrike type, type things. Got a bit of an halfway offset. Show it there for now. Acoustics? Nah, no, don't, not any acoustics. I am slightly concerned that I am very rapidly approaching my weight limit. Um, let's go with two pound of standards. Should be fine. Just, just slightly concerned about the fact I don't have any torpedo protection. Because even if I go for something simple like that, I think I'd rather have armor. That's just so risky. Hmm. Could drop a little bit of speed in exchange for that. Tell you what, if I drop to twenty-four knots, and I get a little bit of anti-torpedo protection. Uh, let me use five hundred tons for extra armor. So twelve. <coughs> Excuse me. No. This is going to be really tricky. Uh, just in case I take a torpedo. I don't like designing ships that don't have this. And I've only got standard bulk kits as well. Hmm, tell you what. No, they're that. Yeah. We're going to go with this. <laughs> 24 knots, standard bulk kits, anti-top 2, and a double bottom hull, I think. <laughs> Schwer Gustav Spinal Gun, Ven. Um, I don't know why I didn't say that in a German accent. Um, or fake German accent. Apologies to uh, German viewers. Um, I don't think that's likely. <laughs> but maybe. I mean, I, I wasn't expecting the Ironclad update when they did it. So um, maybe if they if they have it. Uh, thank you. I, I quite like the look of this ship. I think she's quite quite nice. We'll see how she did gets on. Uh, this is 1918. So, for 1918, I, I don't think she's too bad. Pretty fearsome ship, I think. Uh, let's try her out. <laughs> Make your ship overweight, it's American. A, harsh fossil. Um... B, you're, you're not allowed. As I'm sure you're aware, you, you can't... It is, it is as big as possible, but um, we are not allowed to go over. Right, got the um, I think it's German. Yep, Germans in sight. Hmm. Looks... Yeah, 12-inch guns, lots of them. Interesting. They got four of them. Right. Whoa. Okay. Okay. So, battleships come about, and yeah, that's fine. Type formation. We've got the two heavy cruisers, which are on a follow command. That's fine. Um, 8 inch, 5 inch, 2 inch. Okay. So they should help they keep lighter ships away. We've got our light cruisers who are set to. Normal, please. Um, I want you on screen. Thank you. 
and we have the destroyers again normal I want you on scout and uh, we'll watch the chaos unfold <laughs> Yeah, everyone seems obsessed with the Atlanta class, but the, I mean, the Atlanta was. I've done builds like the Atlanta. Um, had fives. Like it was. Is it super duper firing four and a half, five inch guns on the Atlanta? Like this thing is way more. Packing a much heavier punch than the Atlanta. 12 inch guns are perfectly dangerous in 1918 as a battleship weapon. I would have gone for them on the uh, Tennessee here, except the. Uh, US used those Italian turrets that I hate. So I've uh, gone for the uh, 14s. So we've got the Tennessee and the Bainbridge, and we've got hits right out the gate. Really? Well, there's a turn up for the books. Yeah, one hit here, just under the X Y turret, even. One here, just under B turret. Yeah, I've got um, yeah, these super firing eight inch guns on the back. You can you can fit twelve inch guns in here, easily enough. Um, this ship is really nice if you want to do a, a Royal Navy style twin twelve, twin twelve, twin. Like A, B, X, Y, Z, 12 inch setup. It can do that. Okay, destroyer guest ramming the main bridge for no reason. Again, the, the, the formation keeping AI is better, particularly if you turn things off loose. But um, yeah, those destroyers, I don't know what they think they're doing. Especially not the guest. Really don't know what his plan is. The uh, Amsterdam taking her uh, screening duties very seriously. The um, Trenton and the Albany not so much. Ah, we spotted some lighter ships. Secondary guns opening up. Triple turrets, invention of triple turrets. When did I can't say that was a good hit? I couldn't tell you when the first triple turret appeared. Uh, I'm not a naval historian, um, but um, they. I think they started to appear. Uh, the reason you didn't see them early on is partly weight. I mean, these things are pretty heavy. Um, and uh, I think as well there was there was a general feeling that that was putting a lot of your like this has got nine guns this has got a, a lot of my main armament is concentrated in these turrets so there was there was a thought that it was better to spread your armament out over multiple um, multiple turrets that's the word I can talk um. <laughs> yeah, tugboat. Yeah, that's a good point. It's trying to give it a tow. Although, to be fair to my ships, they haven't kind of gotten into that much of an idiot ball today, which is nice. Uh, is my ship under the Washington Naval Treaty? No, it is not. It is uh, considerably over the weight limit of 36,000 tons. Uh, although... Of course, if these ships had... Because this is 1918, before the Washington Naval Treaty was signed, um, these ships, the USA would have been able to keep them. They wouldn't have had to get rid of them or anything like that. Because uh, there, there, was, there, was there was a list of ships that were exempt from 
each basically each nation that signed it had a had a list of ships that were exempt. A uh, hood being a good example for the British, who was way over the thirty six thousand ton limit. I mean, the, the, I think these guys are kind of on par with Hood in terms of displacement. Yeah, yeah, they are. How much these cost? 50 million. Interesting. Have to wait a while before we can get any IDs. V4 bravely trying to chase down the Amsterdam. They have launch torpedoes, but are not threatening the battleships, so I think we're okay. So, uh, I think with displacement, particularly if you're looking at in comparison to historical displacements, Ultimate Admiral definitely uses what I would call real displacement, like the total displacement of the ship, fully armed and equipped for war, with all her supplies, ammunition, fuel, torpedo protection filled up, all that stuff. And they do tend to be a bit heavier than the reported displacement, particularly in the interwar period, uh, when people would, would say, oh yeah, yeah, it's standard displacement, it's 36,000 tons. Whereas in reality, when you put you know, the supplies on board, um, they were more than that but that was actually part of the treaty negotiations because um the uk and france basically said look it's not fair to to impose the displacement limits when the ships are fully armed and equipped and fueled up and everything because um our ships have to go further we've got a large empire we need um we need our ships to be able to carry lots of stuff whereas you've got you don't have a large empire, you just need your ships to poodle about off the coast, so it's not fair. So, yeah, standard displacement in the treaties is, is very much a fudge anyway. Kill the V5, please. 42,000 for Hood. Okay. Ah, but is that 42,000 standard or 42,000 full load? Because I think UAD uses full load for their for the character, for their displacement. <laughs> the, the mission of the British at all times is to annoy the French. I jest. I jest. Sam goes down after dueling with those torpedoes. Millie, be quiet. 46 at full load. See, that's that's what I'm meaning. Like, I think if you're building a historical version of Hood in Ultimate Admiral, you should go for the 46, not the 42. Um, personally, um, if I'm doing historical builds, I try and ignore the... Uh, I'll do the displacement last. I'll try and get the ship as close as I can to what the ship was like, rather than worrying about the displacement too much. But no, these these are large super dreadnoughts. No, uh, no question about it. Launched a torpedo, you s sneaky sausage. Rage kill it. Oh, I should have just kept going straight. Mm -hmm. Missed. 
Although the Bainbridge uh, might be okay. Don't swing your ass out too much, please, Bainbridge. No, you're fine. Don't really care about the other ships too much. Right. Chase her down and kill her before she can reload. Thank you. Right, they formed up in a nice line. <laughs> Looks like the North Carolina's avoided the torpedoes too, which is good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Ultimate Admiral, very much from the uh, Admiral point of view. Um, although, if you do single ship battles, it's not too bad. Uh, something like, say, War on the Sea, you've got a lot more like fine control over your damage control teams and stuff like that. But I think the um, I think the level of abstraction in Ultimate Admiral is about right. Um, I just wish the uh, like. They're supposed to be on screen scout orders, but they've just left the battleships and the heavy cruisers to, to go in and by themselves. I wish there was a bit more fine control over what your units were doing. Um, I'm sure that'll come. But, uh, tell you what, instead of scouting, which I think is just a, a no order, let's go on screen instead. See if that'll get you to actually, you know, screen rather than hiding at the back. On, kill him before he can launch. Down goes the V4, wherever that is. Oh my word. A <laughs> firepower throwing at this thing and it's still not dying. Many bulkheads. There we go. <laughs> Killed with um, extreme prejudice there as a 14 inch gun makes the uh, ship's main magazine explode. Alright, where's V4? Is it uh, V4 sank? Yeah. Oh, that was the one that was behind us. Okay, good, 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 good. North Carolina is the better Carolina. I wouldn't know. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in that. Um, yeah, I've had a lot of thoughts about torpedo spam um, in the game. I think one thing, definitely if UAD held in multiplayer, it would be a Torpedo heavy meta, should we put it like that? It's a pretty nice pair of hits on the uh, Vondertan, which then uh, self, self immolates. <laughs> what are they using? Um, Babet 2. Group three, Cordite. There you go. That'll, that'll be what it is. Uh, so one thing I would like to see is deck-mounted torpedo launchers. If you read the game files, there's a few things that actually don't work that way in the game, <laughs> like the help files. One is um, deck-mounted torpedo launchers. There was a reason that the battleship didn't use deck torpedoes, and that's because that drop is actually quite a lot. And uh, the torpedoes would often just break <laughs> when you did that. So one option would be simply to restrict, ban, or something else for deck-mounted torpedoes on things that aren't destroyers or light cruisers. It's one option. Another option, um, and this is my preferred one because it's really simple, is for deck-mounted torpedo launches, especially. I think they should come as standard with only one 
sit with torpedoes loaded and no reloads. And you have to pay to get the reload options. And those reload, if you go for those, they significantly increase your flash fire, ammo detonation chance, whatever. I'd love to see torpedo launchers be far more vulnerable to like small arms fire. So like if you had a deck torpedo like mounted on the deck here, really easy for the enemy to take it out. Um, because it's an unarmored thing filled with tubes with high explosive in them. Um, and lastly, I'd like to see belt armor effect torpedo penetration. The game still actually says that that's what happens, but it's not. <laughs> like, so it doesn't matter how thick the belt is on your battleship, um, torpedoes will cause the same amount of damage. So I'd like to see belt armor do something to torpedoes. Other things you could do, you could introduce failure rates so that you play uh, dud bingo, as uh, Stealth calls it, in uh, War on the Sea. Um, that could just get annoying. The other thing I'd like to see is torpedoes going off course, because they weren't perfect, especially not in uh, Ultimate Admiral's time frame. Um, there's lots of things you could do to reduce torpedo effectiveness, but um, yeah, it's better than it was. Uh, it used to be that torpedo builds were insane. And if you take money into account, torpedoes are actually quite expensive. Um, which will probably be about major balancing factor in the campaign. Uh, imagine cordite torpedoes. <laughs> yeah. uh, propellant doesn't seem to make any difference. To, to The only thing that changes your uh, chance of going boom with torpedoes is if you use oxygens. The Mark 14 simulator. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like we're coming up on the rear of their line. All their light ships, I think, have been dealt with. Okay, see now, those, what the flip? It just sank from 10 hits. Okay. Min oh, minimum bulkheads. <laughs> oh dear, crap armor. Yeah, those things cannot deal with uh, flooding hits. Another flooding hit. See, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, the, uh, the destroyers are now actually doing better, so I think the scout order was bad. Minneapolis has dropped back because her engines are damaged, so that's fine. And those cruisers are actually trying. So that's that's good. That, that's probably the best I've seen the AI do. Holding, like dealing with the fleet and stuff. So that's positive. Children of a Dead Earth, like Ultimate Admiral in Space. Interesting. There's a few games coming out this year that do interest me. Um, and one of them struck me as kind of Ultimate Admiral in Space. I wonder if I've still got the list on my on the streaming notes here. I think I do. Uh, I think it was Falling Frontier. That looked that looked pretty interesting. Um, KSP with guns. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's definitely one that I'm interested in picking up. That looked like it was kind of up my street. So we've got the Mecklenburg over here, which is suffering. And then we've got the Kaiser Kaldegross and the Ostfriesland not running away, but certainly not um, making an attack on the uh, Tennessee here, which has taken remarkably little damage. <laughs> it's taken 192 hits. 13 of which were blocked completely, 122 which have ricocheted, and only 14 have actually gone through and done damage.
Mind you, these ships, 50 million are, uh, uh, yeah, 20, wow, Popeye Mecklenburg, what killed you? A six inch gun, <laughs> six inch gun goes through the stern belt extended and blows up the entire ship. Oh dear. Well, that's what happens when you have four inches of armor, I suppose. the gross just ceases to exist how many hits did that take 15 uh, 11 of which were from the 14 inch guns so yeah on average these ships taking about 10 hits to uh, send to the bottom the uh, Ostfriesland is retreating I think it's fair to say <laughs> Well, the AI in Ultimate Admiral is capable of doing things that you as a player cannot do, which is very interesting. So if you manual... Oh, there goes the uh, Austria <laughs> Um Which I'll talk about in the next video, because YouTubers, that's your lot. Uh, those of you on Twitch, uh, we're going we're gonna to carry right on. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that one, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye-bye.